Belarus's Defense Ministry has released a video showing a military training exercise. It involves an air defense unit armed with M2K missile launchers. This was supplied by Russia. The drill comes after Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled his plans to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. Ukraine has called for an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council against what it calls Russia's nuclear blackmail. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that his country would station tactical nu nuclear arms in Belarus. Putin said the move is similar to the United States storing its weapons across Belgium, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands and Turkey. Ukraine accused Russia of breaching its obligations and undermining the nuclear disarmament architecture. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, has said that the bloc is ready to impose sanctions on Belarus. Minsk will face new sanctions if it hosts Russian nuclear weapons. Borrell called this an irresponsible escalation and threat to European security. He said, and I quote, Belarus can still stop it. It's their choice. A Ukrainian army drone has shown the condition of Bakhmut. The city is in ruins. Authorities say that the situation there has stabilized. However, the footage shows massive destruction in a residential area. Bakhmut has been one of Russia's major targets. Russia is trying to fully capture Ukraine's industrialized Donbass region. North Korea has fired two short-range ballistic missiles off its eastern coast. According to South Korea, the missiles flew cross-country. Japan said that both missiles landed outside its exclusive economic zone. This was North Korea's seventh missile launch in this month. It comes after the US and South Korea completed an 11-day exercise, which was their biggest field training in years. US aircraft carrier USS Nimitz staged combined naval exercises with South Korea. The drill took place in international waters off the island of Jeju. This comes after North Korea fired the two uh, short-range ballistic missiles. The carrier will arrive at a South Korean naval base in Busan. It will be the first docking in South Korea in nearly six years. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has sacked Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. This comes a day after Gallant broke ranks with the government. He called for a halt to Netanyahu's plan to overhaul the judicial system. Massive protests have broken out after Gallant was fired. Protesters gathered outside Netanyahu's residence in Jerusalem, breaching a security cordon. Pension reform protests broke out outside the Louvre Museum in Paris. Protesters' banners read, Retire at 60, work less to live longer. Tourists visiting the Louvre were disappointed with the chaos. One tourist said that people save money their entire lives to come here and it's a shame they can't get in. This comes ahead of the 10th round of nationwide strikes. People in Hong Kong held a protest against a government policy. This was the first protest to take place in Hong Kong in about two years. It was held under strict rules, including a cap on numbers. Protesters were required to wear an identifying number tag. Officials closely examined banners and placards for politically sensitive and seditious words. In 2020, China imposed the national security law in Hong Kong. This was done to stamp out dissent. Taiwan's former president has arrived in China. This is the first cross-strait visit by a current or former leader of the island nation to China in over seven decades. During the 12-day trip, there will be no official meetings. The president said that the focus is on paying tribute to his ancestors. Taiwan's Marine Corps personnel lowered the island's flag from the roof of its embassy in the capital of Honduras. This comes as China and Honduras begin formal diplomatic relations. Taiwan has accused Beijing of using coercion and intimidation to lure away its few remaining allies.
Myanmar held a military parade in its capital, Naypyidaw. Hundreds of troops marched to mark the country's annual Armed Forces Day. This was a grand display of weapons which ranged from rocket launchers to tanks. This comes days after the US imposed fresh sanctions against the junta for inflicting, and I quote, pain and suffering on the people of Burma. The military staged a coup in February 2021. It ousted the democratically elected party under the leadership of Aung San Suu Kyi. Sudan's army chief, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has called upon troops to end support for authoritarian leaders. Burhan seized power during a coup in 2021. This derailed the democratic transition, which took place after the ouster of former Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, in 2019. Burhan said the latest coup has failed because it had not brought about change, but rather the return of the old regime of Bashir's loyalists. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is in Ghana. She's on a three-nation tour of Africa. The visit is part of a diplomatic push by the Biden administration to deepen ties with the continent. After Ghana, Harris will, lead, uh, will head to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania and Lusaka in Zambia. The diplomatic trip will conclude on April 2nd. Former U.S. President Donald Trump held his first election rally in Texas. He accused the prosecutors investigating him of employing dark and conspiratorial language. He also said that investigations against him are straight out of the Stalinist Russia horror show. He added that prosecutors aim to fire up his base ahead of the Republican primary elections. An Anglo-French oil company has said that a limited oil leak occurred at one of its well sites in southern England. Perenco UK said the spill was being contained and an investigation has been launched. Reports say that about 200 barrels of reservoir fluid leaked into the water at Poole Harbour. Perenco UK produces about 40,000 barrels of oil equivalent in a day. The US state of Georgia witnessed large hailstones and high winds. The hailstones were around 2.4 centimeters large. Authorities have issued flash flood warnings in the areas hit by the storm in Georgia and in the neighboring state of Alabama. People in Georgia are also cleaning up after a tornado struck the U.S. state. The tornado destroyed buildings and uprooted trees. Authorities say that the tornado left a trail of destruction for 274 kilometers. Ahead of this, the U.S. state of Mississippi witnessed a powerful storm. At least 25 people were killed. Forests in eastern Spain are witnessing devastation caused by wildfires that broke out last week. More than 500 firefighters, 20 planes and helicopters were deployed to battle the flames. This was the first major wildfire in Spain this year. It destroyed more than 4,000 hectares of forest. Over 1,700 people were forced to leave their homes. Parts of southern Europe have faced an unusually dry winter. This has escalated fears that there could be a repeat of last year's devastating wildfires. People in the German capital of Berlin voted on a proposal on the climate crisis. The proposal aims to force authorities to drastically ramp up Berlin's climate goals. The referendum calls for Berlin to become climate neutral by the year 2030. There is an existing law which sets a deadline for achieving climate goals by 2045. This is also Germany's target. The referendum requires the support of at least 25% of eligible vo voters. America's Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation has sold all deposits and loans of Silicon Valley Bank to First Citizens Bank and Trust Company. The transaction has been structured as a whole bank purchase with loss share coverage. With the move, depositors of Silicon Valley Bank, 
Nas National Associ Association will automatically become depositors of First Citizens Bank and Trust Company. Barclays has raised its terminal rate forecast for the Bank of England's benchmark policy rate by a quarter point to 4.5%. The development comes after the central bank's 11th straight hike last week. Barclays also raised its forecast for UK's gross domestic product for the first three quarters of the year between 0.1 to 0.2 percentage points. The chairman of Saudi National Bank has resigned for personal reasons after his comments on Credit Suisse sent that firm's stock cratering. The filing on Riyadh's uh, Taduwal Stock Exchange announced Amar al Khudairi's resignation from Saudi National Bank. Shares of Credit Suisse sank over 30% after al Khudairi announced that the Saudi National Bank would not provide more money to the Swiss lender. Amazon has announced it's going to cut 9,000 more jobs across its global business. This is the second big cull of staff at the online retailer this year. The company said the cuts would fall mostly in its cloud services, advertising and Twitch live streaming units. The announcement comes two months after Amazon announced it had announced expanded staff cutting plans to affect more than 18,000 workers. According to S&P Global Ratings, India's economic growth is projected to be at 6% in the fiscal year starting April. It's expected to rise to 6.9% in the following fiscal year. In a quarterly update for the Asia-Pacific region, the agency saw inflation rates easing to 5% in the 2023-24 fiscal. Inflation was earlier pegged at 6.8%. Indian drug maker Sun Pharmaceutical Industries Limited would see a revenue drop in a few of its businesses and incur some additional expenses. The company says this is due to an IT security incident that happened earlier this month. The, in the incident included a breach of certain file systems and the theft of some company and personal data. Elon Musk has put the current value of the microblogging site Twitter at $20 billion. The current value is less than half the $44 billion Musk paid for the social media platform just five months ago. Musk wrote about the brutal contraction in Twitter's value in an email. It also mentioned Twitter's financial crisis and that at one point it was on the verge of bankruptcy. Australian banks are urging Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's government to ban the use of credit cards for online gambling. They're arguing that the multi-billion dollar industry lacks basic regulation implemented in licensed venues decades ago. Banks including Citibank, Suncor, Bank of Queensland and Bank of Australia have already taken action and banned their credit cards from being used for gambling. Microsoft doesn't want its rivals to use Bing's search index to power their AI chatbots. The tech giant has warned some Bing-powered search engines that it will revoke access to the company's search index if they continue to use it as the foundation for their AI tools. Microsoft apparently draws the line at using Bing's search index as fodder for AI chatbots. Mark Zuckerberg has announced two new updates for WhatsApp groups. With the new updates, admins will get more control over their group privacy. The first new update will let group admins decide who can join the group. The second update will let users easily see groups they have in common with other users on their lists. These features will start rolling out globally over the coming weeks. With Antonio Conte's official Sunday exit, Reports are rife on who will succeed the Italian as Tottenham Hotspur's new coach. Julian Nagelsmann, who was sacked by Bayern Munich this week, is considered the favourite for the job. Mauricio Pochettino, who was fired in 2019, just months after leading the club to the Champions League final, is also tipped for a possible return. Brazilian Football Association president Ednaldo Rodriguez has said that Real Madrid coach Carlo Ancelotti would be an obvious choice to fill Brazil's vacant managerial position. However, the possible move is subject to Ancelotti's availability at the end of the European season. Despite speaking highly about the Italian, 
Rodriguez pointed out that they should be careful and respect due process. This, as Ancelotti is under contract with Real Madrid until 2024. Former Formula One world champion Jensen Button has said that he suffered heat exhaustion and nearly retired from yesterday's race before finishing 18th at his NASCAR debut. Button added that, I stopped twice for a minute, they put ice on me, gave me loads of water and I went back out. The 43-year-old Briton won the F1 World Championship in 2009. Red Bull F1 driver Max Verstappen is being accused of concocting the drive shaft problem which hampered his race weekend in Jeddah. During free practice in Jeddah, the Dutchman was complaining over the radio about his downshifts, hinting at a possible gearbox issue. However, when qualifying rolled around, it was a problem with the drive shaft which ended his season prematurely. His session prematurely, sorry. World number one Carlos Alcaraz has cruised into the last 16 of the Miami Open after a victory over Dusan Lajovic. The 19-year-old Spanish defending champion won 6-0, 7-6, 7-5 to set up a meeting with American Tommy Paul. Alcaraz has won 16 of 17 matches this year and has not dropped a set in his past two tournaments. He needs to win this tournament to maintain his number one position. World number five te men's tennis player Daniel Medvedev is through to the fourth round of the Miami Open. He has reached the fourth round following the withdrawal of Alex Molkan from the scheduled third round match later today. Medvedev had a bye in the first round and dismissed Roberto Carbeles Vienna 6-1-6-2 in his opening match. Molkan withdrew from the tournament with a right hip injury yesterday. India men's doubles pair of Satvik Sairaj Rankiredi and Chirag Shetty capped off their impressive campaign with a title win. The duo beat China's Ren Jiang Yu and Tan Quang in the final of the Swiss Open Super 300 Badminton Tournament. The second-seeded Indian pair dished out an attacking game to outwit the world number 21 pair 21-19, 24-22 in 54 minutes. In cricket, all-rounders Ravindra Jadeja, Aksar Patel and Hardik Pandya have gained significantly in the latest BCCI annual player contracts. Jadeja has been moved to Grade A plus from Grade A. Pandya and Patel have been bumped up to Grade A from Grade B and Grade C respectively. There are four groups in the BCCI's contract list. A plus players on, on uh, rupees 7 crore retainers, A players on 5 crore, B players on 3 crore and C players on 1 crore retainers. Five-time IPL champions Mumbai Indians have finally returned to the iconic Vankate Stadium after a gap of two years. Mumbai will play their first match at the venue on April 8th against arch-rivals Chennai Super Kings. The team will open their IPL 2023 campaign against a Royal Challengers Bank, uh, at Bangalore's M. Chindaswamy Stadium on April 2nd. South Africa have produced the highest successful 2020 international run chase to defeat the West Indies. They chased down 259 runs against West Indies in the second T20 match in Centurion yesterday. The Proteas broke Bulgaria's record where they scored 246 runs while chasing 242 against Serbia in 2022. Leading the South African innings was Quinton de Kock who scored 100 runs of 44 deliveries. Actor Orlando Bloom was in Ukraine to meet President Vladimir Zelensky. The UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador discussed humanitarian projects with the Ukrainian President. Bloom met children and families during his three-day visit. He said that children needed an end to this war. This was the actor's first trip to Ukraine since 2016. K-pop singer Jimin's debut solo album Face breaks release day records. Face sells over a million copies worldwide in 24 hours. The main track of the album, Like Crazy, topped iTunes' top songs charts in 111 countries. Face ranks number one on iTunes' top albums chart in 63 countries. Jay-Z is the world's wealthiest rapper with a net worth of $2.5 billion. 
He recently sold a majority of his 50% stake in luxury cognac brand, Deuce. The deal earned him around $750 million. Overall, Jay-Z is the 1,210th richest person in the world. He was named the greatest rapper of all time last month by Billboard. Netflix has renewed thriller series You for its fifth and final season. Penn Badgley will re reprise his role as the serial killer Joe. Netflix teased that Joe could finally face justice in the final season. Executive producer Sarah Gamble will step down from her role as the showrunner. Television network ABC has announced season 20 of Grey's Anatomy. The show is ABC's longest-running primetime scripted series. Meg Ma Marinas will take over from Krista Vernoff as showrunner. The show was in the news recently over its lead actor Ellen Pompeo's departure. Tony Shalhoub will play disgraced Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn in a new series. The six-part drama series is titled Fall of the God of Cars. Ghosn helped save Nissan from near bankruptcy in 1999. He was arrested in 2018 for gross misuse of company assets, among other charges. He escaped to Beirut in 2020 and is now wanted by Interpol. All five seasons of Arrested Development will stream on Netflix. In February, Netflix had announced taking the show off. Netflix retained streaming rights in a last-minute licensing deal. The first three seasons will not be available on Hulu by late 2023. The show stars Jason Bateman, Michael Serra, and Portia De Rossi. Singer Adele is extending her Las Vegas residency. Her shows will resume at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace. Adele has added 34 more dates to her residency starting June 16th. The residency will be completed on the 4th of November. The singer also announced a live concert film of the residency. The Spider-Man trilogy is set to return to Netflix on the 1st of April. The Tobey Maguire films left the streamer in February this year. It was speculated that the trilogy might end up on Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus streams many films from the Marvel Universe. Actor Millie Bobby Brown is set to make her writing debut. Brown has penned the novel 19 Steps, which is based on her own family history. The 19-year-old says she was inspired by her grandmother, who survived World War II. The book is published by William Morrow, an imprint of HarperCollins. The novel will release on September 12th. 